I'm Yoz from DIYPhotography.net. I'm here with Francis from Adobe talking about the new update of Premiere Pro. DIY Photography's coverage of IBC 2022 is sponsored by Sennheiser, the future of audio. Sackler, producer of professional tripods. And B&H, the professional source. Hi Francis, how's it going? Oh, fantastic. Really happy to be back at IBC. I can imagine. Been a while. Yeah, 2019 was the last time. Same for me. Yeah. So Francis, tell me about the update of Premiere Pro. What's new? Well, we've been really focusing on listening to our users. We've taken a bit of a break from flashy new features and we're focusing on stability, performance, and top usability requested features. That's amazing. Yeah, so we've improved uh, the playback performance and rendering performance of effects. We've improved our graphics and titling feature set, adding more capabilities in there. All right, can you uh, elaborate on that? Yeah, totally. So some of the things that we have coming in this release are what we call mask-only fill. What that means is that the fill of a shape or text layer, you can put a texture or like a piece of video inside that. Basically just opens up a lot of opportunities for you to make really interesting looking titles. All right, so and much quicker. Yeah, for sure. Right. Another thing that's really kind of nice is you can also export your text or your graphics as a text document or a CSV document. Right. So the way you do that is through the text panel, which you can also use for editing captions. Yeah. You can imagine a case where maybe you're working on a really long form documentary and you've got just like dozens and dozens of titles and you have a producer who wants to review them, and double check you've got every the one's name spelled correctly and... Instead of going through a work, like in through, going an entire video, just go through a document. Right, so you can just give them a text document of all the graphics and I personally think this is going to be fantastic because I used to be an editor myself and this was something that happened all the time. I have to go through and take screenshots of every graphic, give them off to the producer, and then if you've misspelled someone's name 15 times, you have to go back through and redo it 15 times. Through the text panel now, you can do a search and replace. That sounds amazing. What else is new? One of the other things I'm really excited about is fade positions for auto-ducking. So what is auto-ducking? Yeah, so Tell this me. is powered by Adobe Sensei, and what it does is you can automatically reduce the level of a background's music track yeah. uh, to go down when there's dialogue happening. So this is so a common... Instead of like pulling instead down of, all yeah. the time, peep, like going to the pen tool, going down... Exactly, automatic. it, it automates that whole thing. Amazing. And it's great too because, you know, if you've gone through and done an entire audio mix and done all your vo audio enveloping, and then the edit changes, you need to add time or remove time, you have to redo all of those automations. Exactly. With auto-ducking, it just does it automatically. But this is not a new feature. What's new is that you can control where those fades happen. So if you want a very natural fade, yeah. editors know that you should sort of overlap where the audio starts to go down as the voice is coming in to make it sound like a smooth, almost like a crossfade. And now you have control over where that happens, but automatically throughout your entire sequence. Can we find that in the audio panel? Yeah, you can find that in the Essential Graphics panel. Uh, look under audio ducking and you'll find it. Perfect. That yeah. sounds really good. So that will really speed up the workflow. Oh, absolutely. You know, me as uh, a former picture editor, I really don't consider myself to be an expert in audio. The Essential Sound workflow is one of those sort of godsends that just helps me get really better sounding audio super fast. Nice. That's good. Yeah. And we also heard uh, in an earlier interview we talked about uh, Frame IO. Can you tell us tell us something about that? Yeah. Well, Frame is now built into Premiere and After Effects. It's been in there since our April release of this year, and it's a fantastic offering. You get it included with your Creative Cloud subscription. Amazing. So you might not even know that you have Frame in your subscription, but you can try it out. You get 100 gigs of free storage, you get two users, uh, so you know if you are collaborating, you both can have full admin access. Uh, and also you can send out unlimited reviews. So if you need to send out a review to you know a client or a producer or whomever, you can send that out and it's just really easy to get feedback. And you know, I know from personal experience uh, that in, in my personal you know, opinion, this is the best review and approval platform out there. Yeah. I used it before I came to Adobe, and I'm just thrilled that they're part of the Adobe ecosystem now. It's amazing. So it sounds like very user-friendly updates, but like, what's next? 
Well, there are a few things that I can tell you about that are coming in the very next release. So 22.6 was our August release. It just went live. You can get that on Creative Cloud Desktop. Just download it. Yeah. If you're a Creative Cloud subscriber, update, you know, included with your subscription. But what's coming next is a lot of really great performance improvements. Right. So the one I want to talk about is two times faster rendering speed for motion graphics templates that were authored in After Effects. Oh, wow. So what that means is that you can author a motion graphics template in After Effects, bring that Mogur into Premiere, customize it, and then now it's going to render two times faster because we're making use of multi-frame rendering that the After Effects team brought into their product just a few releases ago. That's really cool. Yeah. And that's going to be available in beta? It's in beta now, so right. you can get the public beta. Uh, if you don't know how to get the public beta, it's quite easy. You don't need to sign up. Uh, you just go to Creative Cloud Desktop, look for the beta app section, find Premiere Pro, and download it. And you can test out all the things that we're working on. Amazing. Definitely yeah. going to try that. Yeah. Francis, thank you so much for the interview. Um, also, make sure to um, check out the Frame I.O. video with more information about that. Um, we're walking around the show, so if you want to keep up to date with the DOI coverage of the IBC 22, make sure to follow us. And if you want to win over $12,000 of Cine gear, make sure to click the link below. And don't forget to like and subscribe and smash that bell.